Namaste. <laughs> well, I had to come back and make another installment of this series because I omitted one very important piece of information. And nobody caught it. This is what really blows my mind about making these videos. I can't insinuate anything. Hints don't work. Huh? They don't land. Nobody gets here. And nobody inquires. Uh huh? Really, I mean, if you guys have been paying attention, somebody would have come back with, hey, wait a minute. How do I, huh? How do I log on? How do I access the privileged layer of the Godnet? I mean, you know, I mentioned this all the way back in the first video of this series, that Shiva and other gods, to some degree or other, have privileged access to the god GPT. Uh, in our metaphor, we're comparing the reality of Ishwar, the godhead, with uh, a metaphor or comparison, a simile, of a universal GPT that instead of generating text like a human-made GPT, <laughs> generates states of being, realities, worlds, you know, incarnations, things like that. So <laughs> if you can gain access, right, to the higher levels of security, of user interface, of the GodNet. You can access GodGPT and, you know, order up pretty much whatever you want. That's what Shiva does. That's what Shakti does. That's what uh, Vishnu does. And even Brahma, <laughs> silly, bumbling Brahma, he is empowered with Ishatvam. Ishatvam means whatever I conceive of, or whatever I imagine, whatever I intend, creates stuff, makes stuff happen. So I gave the example the other day of Brahma when he became angry at his sons, his mental sons, the four Kumaras, because they didn't want to become progenitors and have lots of babies. <laughs> Rudra came out and incarnated from his forehead. So this is the nature of anyone who has a high-level access to God GPT. So the question is, how do we log on, you know, in protected mode or whatever you want to call it, your personal VPN uh, that goes direct to Ishwar? Well, I dropped a hint. I gave a little hint the other day. But nobody caught it. Nobody got it. And I think it points out that people don't understand the difference between the holy name the names of God, and ordinary language. We talked about it the other day in this video, beyond words and letters, that sound vibrations, Vedic sound vibrations, beginning with Aum, and derived from the Matrika, is another thing for you to look at, the Matrika, the uh, array, or matrix of Sanskrit letters have built-in meanings in terms of the states of being that they invoke in the God GPT. So, mantras are consciously created sequences or networks of these syllables of, from the matrika with specific meanings. 
For example, we discussed the mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, in this series. So how Om has five parts. That's discussed in Mandukya Upanishad. <laughs> See, this, this, this particular concept invokes all the different branches of knowledge that we've covered from existentialism, psychology, ethics, all the way through, you know, the highest Advaita philosophy. So what we're saying here is that when you invoke the name of God, this is a special channel because uh, my Adi Guru explained very, very nicely, the name of God has no referent within the dualistic material creation. Well, what does that mean? Well, we talked the other day in that video, which you watched, right? <laughs> About how on the level of meaning or in the world of thoughts, words are real. They're not real on the level of things. In fact, words are specifically symbols that refer to things, which means they're separate from the things they refer to. There's one category that's different, and that is the name of God, and any terminology that refers to the transcendental existence. And those terms have no referent, they have no meaning within the duality, within the material creation. They only have meaning in Advaita, non-duality, in the kingdom of God. Actually, the kingdom of God is called Dvaita Dvait, or Bheda Bhed, which means it's apparently dualistic because it has forms and qualities. However, the substance of everything is pure consciousness. Satchitananda. As compared with this material world where everything is temporary. A temporary, miserable, <laughs> and in ignorance. Suffering. So the kingdom of God is that realm where things like uh, duality and non-duality become meaningless. But instead, terms like Shiva and Shakti and Rama and Vishnu and all of their ancillary holy names become not only meaningful, but full of spiritual potencies. Now, what are spiritual potencies? Well, remember, I showed you the clip from a Chanting Japa movie. And the thing about chanting japa is that you do it for a couple of hours and you will experience a change in consciousness. See? Because, again, the meaning or the experience of consciousness is dependent on its object, just like the meaning of a word is dependent on its referent. If I say pot, for example, then it refers to a clay pot. But if I say Shiva or Om Namah Shivaya, oh, see, this is a whole different thing because it has no referent in duality. Its only referent is in the world of God. Satyam. Satyam Shivam Sundaram Satchitananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karanam Because this realm is the realm of Sushupti, this is the realm of God GPT, this is the realm of Shiva, this is the causal realm. Vigyana Maya Kosha. 
The Vijnana Maya Kosha is the intelligence, the will, also the ego. <laughs> but it is the inner organ, Antakarna. And so one who can awaken in the inner organ, in the self, can do anything can be, have, do, know, uh, create, <laughs> or well, whatever, anything that they want uh, within the scope of their imagination. And believe me, someone who reaches that level of consciousness is going to have a big imagination. They're going to think big thoughts. And that's another problem that we have here uh, in reaching out to our audience is that we like to think big thoughts. In fact, I spend most of my day <laughs> thinking big thoughts and, at the same time, chanting japa, which tends to bring those thoughts into manifestation. So I spent a lot of time today, for example, since, what, 4.30 in the morning, chanting Om Namah Shivaya, walking up and down, cleaning the house, cooking breakfast, watering the plants, you know, doing all kinds of things. But the whole time that mantra is going in my mind. That's the best way to chant any mantra. Maybe in the beginning you have to use your voice, chant it silently, then chant it mentally only. So this is the perfection of mantra chanting. And if you do this, if you start you know, before sunrise and continue throughout the day, the whole quality of your experience will change automatically. Automatically, you become more intelligent, more purified, have more abilities, be able to manifest things more efficiently. I mean, the list of benefits just goes on and on. So that's why the next series is on Shiva Sahasranama. That's why. See, I, I, it's amazing that nobody picked this up. It's like, how hard do I have to hint to get through to you guys? Yeah? I think, see, the Western mind is crippled by Aristotelian logic and demands a clear, linear, prosaic explanation of everything. Literal language, linear language, black and white. This exists, that does not exist. <laughs> it's exactly the kind of thinking that the Buddha condemns. And he says, we don't teach views, we don't take positions. We have set that all aside. The Tathagata, the one who is well gone, teaches the Dhamma in the middle. Not any extremes. Black and white, yes and no, right and wrong, true and false, alive and dead. All these things refer to duality, to the body. But the Buddha says, the Tathagata teaches the path in the middle from ignorance sankara arises from sankara consciousness arises from consciousness name and form arises and so on but teaches samuppada the process of becoming and like we said in the last video i run out of things to uh, pointers <laughs> they only give you five Anyway, in that video, which you should have watched, anyway, um, whatever you dream when you go into Sushupti becomes your reality. It runs your life. Because this is the God GPT. So if you fill your mind with Hari Nam, with the, the names of God, Shiva Nam, Ishwara Nam, uh, and so on. Bhagavata Nam, <laughs> Shakti Nam. Then 
these qualities, these states of being and consciousness, well, of course, the consciousness is the first thing, right? But as soon as the consciousness changes, your whole life will change and you will experience a new quality of existence beyond anything that you could ever imagine. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. That's why I say this after every video. Aung Namah Shivaya. Ha, ha, ha.